Hello, everybody. This is UVL. I am back with another uh, tutorial on the character sheet. Um, I've gone ahead and in addition to this, what I'm going to do today is walk you through uh, character sheets and how to set them up and how to edit them. <coughs> And uh, some other neat tricks and cool things that make it make the game a lot easier for you. Now, this is my character that I've assigned to it. Shoe. Uh, he has a picture. He has a background. He has a character sheet with stats. Um, and that's all stuff that I entered as the DM, just because I needed character sheets for players to test out on and stuff. So that's what a completed sheet will look like, and I'll show you how you get there. This is a blank character sheet. And it has no bio, stats, nothing's filled in. Everything is, you know, blank. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is this has, this is in the window. I can't get it past the window. Okay, and you'll notice that it takes up a lot of room in here. So, what I generally do, since I have two screens, is I'll click on this little button here. That pops it out. And even if you don't have a second screen, you may want to do this because then you can just minimize it right off the screen back to it and pull it back up. Now I'm going to maximize this so I can go over some of the other things. Uh, first tab is your bio and info. It's blank. There's nothing there. Character sheet. This is where it looks exactly like a D&D sheet would uh, for the most part. Attributes and abilities. This is the back end uh, where there are... You can make changes to this, but if you change the wrong thing, you can completely screw the sheet up. So I just don't touch it. Um, we'll talk about abilities later. Some of those, usually I will add those in for you, uh, just so that we know what's going on there. But first I'll start with the first tab, Bio and Info. Click your Edit button here, and you can now choose a file. I want to go there. Uh, you can load a file in if you've got an avatar, something you want to do, something you want to show. There it is, it automatically resizes it to put it in there. Give yourself a name. You can name yourself. Uh, and this one I'm going to be Simon Templar because you guys have dealt with him on many occasions. And I found bio. Uh, water deep. The represent, representative. Water deep. Okay, now you can do other things. It's a, it's a full text editor. Well, okay. It's a text editor. You can cut and paste stuff in there. So if you write a bio on your own, you can cut and paste it in there, and it can be multiple pages. Um, click Save Changes. Now it appears. And if I I can't do it right now because there's going to be else in the line, but I believe it, it will show up here when you're looking into the journal. If it's visible to other players, it'll be visible to you. They'll see your little avatar there and your name. Uh, and I believe if they click on it, they can actually read your bio. Uh, so you can describe you know, what you look like and other uh, important things that are noticeable. Or, you know, you can give the character's history. So that's up to you. It's yours to edit, do what you want. Now, the character sheet, I'm going to need to go full screen for this. This is just like your DD character sheet. Enter your stats here. And if you want, let's make this character have 18 strength, uh, 14 dexterity, constitution of 16, and intelligence of 10, wisdom of 8, and a charisma of 11. Okay. Now you'll see that already by just putting in that stuff, values are populated. Animal handling. I have a minus 1. Because I'm a wisdom. Perception is minus one. Those are my stats. I have a proficiency bonus of two because I'm first level. Uh, I can go up here. Uh, you can edit your name here too. It'll change uh, as well. You can choose what class you want to be. In this case, you want to be a fighter. It automatically populates your saving throws uh, for you. And your armor class is already determined by your dex. It will modify it if you add equipment in. Uh, we'll make this level 5, 
and background we don't need to worry about right now race can be, uh, let's be a human uh, alignment awfully good experience points that we're about at this point in time speed is 30 you can type all these things in um, you don't have inspiration uh, you can pick your skills you are a fighter so I believe you begin with uh, well, we'll do acrobatics and um, athletics so their profession they automatically change um, Tools. We'll give them a tool proficient in, um, let's say, cards. Um, uh, proficient in it. It is a uh, intelligence based stat, so there you go. So you have cards, you have three. Uh, and if you click on this, it closes it and it just shows cards intelligence three. Now that's true, like other proficiencies in languages. You can go in here, language, a language, a weapon, or armor, or other. This is useful because that way you can say armor, efficiency, with whatever armor, heavy armor, whatever. As far as language, you just type in efficiency, Elven, gives you your language proficiency, just so you know what language you speak. You can add armor and weapon proficiencies like all simple and martial weapons, that kind of thing. Uh, hit points, that's obviously determined by your level and class. Uh, if you roll them, you can roll them. Uh, if you would like, or you can use the standard, you just enter the max hit points. We'll give him uh, 50 hit points. His current hit points is max, and we can also go in and type that and go 50. Now, the great thing about this is that you can subtract it out or add it up as you go along. Uh, temporary hit points, he has zero. You have a total of five hit dice because you're fifth level, and the hit dice is a 1d12, I think, or 1d10. And that's the number of hit dice you currently have. You have five. Death saves, they speak for themselves. Now, here comes the fun part. Um, oh, yes, and let me see you. Personality traits. Uh, you can enter all this in to keep reminding yourself because you're the only one who can see this. No one else is going to be able to see this stuff, so. Uh, when you're done editing, you just close the little gearbox and it closes it up. Now, as a fighter, I automatically get a resource of second win. Uh, fifth level, I think I can use it once, uh, or maybe twice. I have to go back and look. Um, then, here is where you would put your attacks, and here is for equipment, and this is other features and traits. And I'm going to get into that now because that's a little bit more complex. But before I do that, uh, I'm going to show you the attribute and abilities, which you can see has expanded from what it was before. So now you have proficiency in acrobatics, so it adds these automatically. This is why I said don't edit these, because this is the back end. This is basically the back end of the spreadsheet that's running, that's allowing you to calculate all that stuff, drawing off of its database. So don't do that. Um, one other thing you'll see up here, you have core, bio, spells, and a little gear. The core, this is the core page. It's got all your stats. This is the bio. This is where you can, you know, describe your character, give your backstory, make notes on your allies and organizations. This is all yours to edit. You just have to click the edit button. You can go in and edit it. Uh, in fact, actually, I think, I'm sorry, you don't need to click the edit button. You can just click on it and go, hello. This is my page. You can also go up here, type in your age, size, height, weight, hair, all that stuff. Just keep track of yourself. Spells. This is your spell casting. You know, this guy's a fighter, so you don't get any spells. Um, if you are uh, one of the off spell casting, like the arcade rogue or the uh, 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 magic casting knight, I forget which one that is. That can be set up in the back end and all help set those attributes. Uh, that, that's something that's set on the next page, which is your settings here. This is how you can configure things to be useful. Like if you are a halfling, you click halfling lock, the game now knows that every time you roll a one when you're trying a skill or a uh, attack, it'll re roll it once. So if you roll a one on your attack, it'll re roll it for you automatically. 
No questions asked, just as an arcane fighter. If you're an arcane fighter, you need that. It'll give you the ability to put spells in. Arcane Rogue, same about it. Uh, class options. That's for later on for uh, prestige classes and stuff like that, I believe. They've expanded that. Um, now, you can multi-class, and if you do, you check this. See, it says Barbarian 1. If you're not a Barbarian, but want to be a Rogue, Rogue 1. It will automatically add your stats to the front of your page, and you can add your abilities and stuff like that. We're not going to multi-class. Uh, we're not using custom classes. There are no, uh, I'm not going to say we're not going to use this, but it's possible that somebody could get an item that modifies your spell slots, because it does keep a keep a uh, track of how many you can actually use. So if you don't mod if you get a magic item that modifies it, it may not always automatically modify your spell slots. Uh, if you have some bonus to your strength or something that pushes your like a magical bonus, will be added in here. Now this button here, add dex tiebreaker to initiative, can be a little confusing because on the front of your sheet, I have an initiative bonus of two point fourteen. The point fourteen is because that's my initiative. That number right there. Uh, so that if somebody else rolls the same initiative and they have a higher dexterity, they will go before me in the order when it's sorted. If they have lower dexterity, they'll go after me. Um, it's up to you whether you do, you know, whether you do that or not. I leave it on by default, but I mean, if it, if it just irritates you, the only time I change it is if you have a negative modifier because it, the math doesn't work right. It actually pulls you up as minus. It's 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 a negative number, and they didn't do absolute values very well. So let's just leave it at that. So I usually leave it on. Um, there's armor class tracking that's automatic. Well, please leave that on. It means if you wear chainmail, it'll automatically update your armor class to chainmail. Plus your dex and plus your shield. That lot of stuff. Saves options, same thing. Skills, if you should happen to have it, if you have jack of all trades, you can click on that. And it will, you know, modify it. If there's, if you have a feat that uh, adjusts your passive perception, that does it. Okay, NPC button. Everybody's gonna click on this once. Don't do it, because this is what happens. You're now an NPC. You cannot do anything. You cannot edit anything. You are, you are basically a monster. See how it looks like the monster block there? Anyway, everyone's gonna do it. Don't do it, because you turned you into an NPC. Um. I have put these on by default because some people have skill modifiers. There's so many classes and races now that some some classes will have a uh, attack modifier or damage modifier based on their fighting styles. Like duelists automatically gain plus two damage on all their attacks when they're using a one hand you know, when they have just one hand uh, weapon in their hand. Uh, this will put your name on. These are all other things that you should just just leave most of this away. Uh, I don't have the API because I didn't uh, pay for it. <laughs> I'm not that high a level, uh, so just leave the ammo tracking off. It won't track your ammo for you. You're gonna have to do it yourself. But you're all pretty good at that. Anyway, back to the core, <clears throat> and now to the fun part, which I'll, I'll show you. Now, in order to do this, I need to be in the actual game. So I'm gonna close this window out. I'm gonna click on Simon. Give him a little more room so I can see stuff. Come on. All right. Uh, what we're going to do first? We're going to do equipment because that's the easiest to do. Order add equipment. Just click there, and it automatically opens a slot. Now, if I click on it, it gives me a couple of options: equipped, uses a resource, has an attack. Okay. If it's just something I'm carrying on me, deselect it. If it's a bag, just say you know. You know, or if it's something in a bag, it's not equipped at the time, it's just something you have. If it's a resource, like uh, arrows, click as a resource, it'll show up. You can actually show it up here and count it down. On your own. If it's a weapon, it has an attack. See how it automatically adds something here? It doesn't know what it is, but it says, I have an attack, so it'll add it there. If you take it away, it goes away. So, the first thing you want to do uh, is close that up, and this is the lock unlock. If I see how it's unlocked now, I click trash can, it goes away. And I can lock it up again. So, 
let's give this fighter a weapon. So I'm going to go to the compendium, type in long sword. Okay, it's one word. Long sword. All I have to do, click, drag it over to the sheet, and drop it. Whoops. Um, hang on. Oh, it did appear. I'm sorry, I missed it. Uh, trash can. Get rid of that second one. Now you see I have a long sword. If I open it up, it is equipped. It has an attack. It automatically adds it to my attack area. And gives me the properties. Versatile. And it's an item type melee weapon. Now there's a whole lot more in there. I'll, I'll scroll to the right and show you. It shows damage. Damage type. Slashing. Saying. It basically does all that bookkeeping. Okay, now this now a longsword, if it's wielded two-handed, has a secondary damage, and I'll show you that up here. And it's automatically close this out. Oh, by the way, this is the weight category. That's the number of items. This is the weight category. So it weighs three pounds. And you can see up here, it's got a long, I've got a longsword. Uh, it's I have plus seven to hit with it. I do one d eight plus four slashing damage. And here's the long form. Uh, it's in a strength attack. I'm proficient with it. Uh, my crit is a 20. Damage 1d8. Slashing. My secondary damage, if I'm using, and, and it will roll a d10 for me, if I'm using it two-handed, it will roll that 1d10 as well as the 1d8, and I take whichever one I'm using. If I'm using one-handed and I've got a shield, then, you know, that's all well good. Let me show you what else happens. Okay, let's, he's got a long sword. Let's give him some defense. Get a shield. We'll drop a shield in here. See, it's accepting drop from compendium. That's what I wanted to see. I now have a shield. It's equipped. My armor class is now 14. If I get rid of that shield, my armor class drops to 12. So it's auto-tracking your armor. So you can basically go and drop items directly in there. Um, let me lock it again. Let's say I'm going to have chain mail as well, and drop that in there, and now my armor class is 18, because chainmail is armor class 15, um, no, 14, yeah, and you can click here real quick to look at the chainmail, armor class 16, and a shield of 2, it's heavy armor, I have disadvantage on stealth, oh, that's right, it's, I don't know. That's right, it's not chain mail, it's a chain shirt. That's what I wanted to give him, but anyway. Yeah, it's chain mail 16, he has a shield, so he's got on classes 18. It ignores his dex. So that is how you equip your items, and you can equip everything that's in the compendium. Um, if you want pen and ink, bedroll, explorers, packs, all that goes in there. It will keep track of your weight for you, too. Um, I don't know, it is the encumbrance system on or off? Encumbrance is off. I'm just going to use the simple encumbrance system. Uh, go back to my core sheet. And when you reach your encumbrance weight, it will start it will start telling you, and it will automatically reduce your speed. Um, for you. In here, you can enter gold pieces, all the gold you have. Now, features and traits. This is where you go. You have to do some, some weighting. If I go into... Let's go to the fighter. Okay. Open up their class. All right. Starting proficiencies, armor, starting equipment, level proficiencies, not worried about that. Fighting style. Okay. You cannot drop your fighting style in there. Like, let's give, make him, um, let's make him a defense. See? The monks have patient defense, which is an ability. Which, even you know, even though it's listed here, it's not something you can actually drop in there. Like I could try. Oh, yeah. See, it doesn't it doesn't populate. So what you have to do is open it up yourself. We'll go and type in the name of it. Defense. It is a class feature, and it is from the fighter group. And then you can just cut and paste. Um, defense. Game. Yeah, 
And then once you're done typing it, you just close that out, and it looks just like Defense Class Fighter. When you armor, you gain a plus one to AC. So that is something you would go to your inventory, and you would look for your armor class. Um, global Armor Class Modifier. Whenever you're wearing armor, you have plus one. Uh, now in the rare instances, and you're going to core, now my armor class is 19 because I am defensive. Now, second wind. I can actually enter second wind in here if I want by adding another thing, but that's just to remind you. Same with action surge. Marsh, uh, uh, you enter your uh, ability score improvements, will be entered later on. Uh, you can enter all this information uh, when you get that. Now, if say I was a dwarf, or let's let's go to elf because that's we've got a lot of interesting things in there. Uh, elf traits. There you go. Alignment speed. Okay, they have dark vision. Now there's no way to show that, so you just type in here, so you know. Dark vision, ratio, because you're an elf, and you can just click in here. Um, I would just grab this part. Control C, Control V, and close it. There you go. Anyway, uh, that brings it back, and you can keep adding those. And because you will have different classes, you'll have different race features and stuff, that piece basically goes there, so you always have it. Um, now, you might be wondering here uh, what this button is. That edit takes you right back to the bio and info page, in case you want to change something there. I'm not going to do that. The, the, the magnifying glass is just that. It allows you to you can increase or zoom in or zoom out. So that's how it works. Um, I don't think there's much more to go over. The bio is already, it's pretty self-explanatory. Spells, ah. If you're a spellcaster, let's go with blessing or bless. You just take the spell, drop it in there, and it adds it. Now, a fighter can't cast blast, but if he was a if he was a character that could cast spells, then you know that's how you would do it, and it automatically will track your spell casting ability, your save, your spell attack bonus. You will have to track your slots um, because I don't believe auto tracking for slots is on either, but I'll have to confirm that. So um, now. Again, I have to remind you, it has to be done while it's inside this window. If you don't, you can't drag stuff to the compendium. It's nice that you can pop it out afterwards because you can drag it to another screen. You can drag it back. You can, you know, check all that stuff. Character sheet, go to your core. So, now, there are some things that will change on this character sheet based on your settings. If you go in the settings, um... Where is it? Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Not settings, not your main settings. Your character settings on your character setting sheet. And these are up to you. Roll queries. You can always roll advantage, toggle it. It'll ask you if you're rolling with advantage when you go to roll, or it'll never roll advantage. And basically it looks like this. If you click on advantage toggle, it now shows you that you can go to advantage, disadvantage or normal before you roll a die. Same with whispers. It'll whisper, it'll ask you public or GM. Same with auto damage. It'll auto, either automatically roll damage for you or and, and any crit damage or don't auto roll damage. Again, that's a personal preference. I try not to do that myself because it's whole. it can be a whole lot of dice sometimes. It makes a lot of noise. Um, now, if you want to go to Query Advantage, those options go away, and now when you go to roll a die, and I'll call, click this roll to hit, whoops, oh, it's not doing that, okay, um, hang on a moment, 
live demos. I'm going to go to core. Oh, and I forgot, if you click on an ability, it should roll it for you. It's not rolling. Why is it not rolling? Oh, again, there, see, because it's whispering. So let me move this page off to the side. See, it's asking, do I want a public role or whisper privately? So a public role, submit it. Do I want a normal role or do I want it with advantage? Submit. Whisper or oh, the other value, the, the other one, submit. Normal role. There you go. So that's what, it, it's going to query you. It gets tiresome very quickly. Very, very quickly. So I would suggest leaving it on either never roll advantage or always roll advantage or to put the toggle on so that you can say, hey, I've got an advantage. Now this will appear at the top of the sheet no matter where you are. So it doesn't have to be in the settings. So there you go. Um, but yeah, advantage. Let's uh, never whisper the roll. Go back to the core. Move this to the side so you can see. And if I roll my longsword... Oh, I didn't turn on 3D dice for this. I turned off 3D dice, didn't I? Uh, enable 3D dice. There we go. Now it should work. There you go. I rolled with advantage, so... I scored a 25 with the longsword. And my damage is 9, or if I'm rolling just the uh, uh, secondary damage, it's 3. And that should actually include... That's a mistake. That should include my strength bonus, too. Because hmm. this one includes my strength bonus. But I will... We'll have to figure that out. If there's things like that, we can correct them on the fly just by uh, putting them there. Anyway, this has gotten a lot longer than I thought it would be, but this is why I did a whole video on its own, because it's a half an hour long. I'm going to stop here, and you can replay this and take a look at it, and uh, let me know uh, when you want to get in there and start making up a character to put in your real-life character, or the, the, the in-real-life character, into the campaign uh, <clears throat> that I'll be setting up. Um, anyway, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in game. Bye.